I'm Crackshot. Welcome to another episode of Crackshot Chronicles. Today's topic, red flag laws. What are they? I've been watching YouTube videos from other YouTubers who are coming up with stories about cops breaking into people's house, knocking on their doors, coming in with a warrant, and telling them, we're here to take your guns because somebody said that you are a threat or to yourself or to somebody else. Uh, evidently, they just go in there, take your guns. You can't do anything about it. They won't tell you who did it, who, who's accusing you. It's basically, they're violating your constitutional laws. Now, I definitely like my guns. <clears throat> I, I love shooting. I, I don't threaten anybody with them. I do have guns for personal protection as well. But the thing is, everybody's getting on this uproar about the government coming in to take our guns. And that is something that we as uh, legal, law-abiding citizens should be trying to put a stop to. However, fighting over <coughs> cops trying to take your guns away from you, whether it's legally or illegally, whether they have probable cause or not, is something that can only be battled in the courtroom. Any attempt to stop the cops at your front door when they're trying to take your guns away is only going to escalate into a shootout and you're going to end up dead. As sorry as it sounds, I mean, it's, it's horrible that that would happen to anybody, but it has happened. Some people have gotten into gunfights with the cops when the cops come knocking on the door to take their guns simply because the next door neighbor got into an argument with them and accused them of, of, ha of having a gun. The laws in the United States sometimes suck. If I accuse you of a DUI, the cops cannot give you a DUI unless they see you. If I accuse you of pulling a gun and pointing it at me, they'll come to your house and take the gun away from you, arrest you, and investigate everything, and you may never get your guns back. I don't see the difference. Why is one law they have to see it, but the other law they don't have to see it? You can come up with reasons and, and legal theories of, uh, and of why this justifies it, but the bottom line is right is right and wrong is wrong. And we live in a country where just because you're right doesn't mean you're going to win. What I suggest is instead of us being like a bunch of fleas on a dog fighting over who owns the dog, you should prepare yourself for the eventuality of if the cops come to your house and take your guns. It is a reality that may come to pass. If it happens, and the only way you know how to defuse a life and death situation is with a gun, and you can't, you can't protect yourself any other way other than with a gun, you're in a sad state. You should really know how to defend yourself, whether you have a gun or not. Because there are places that you can't take a gun to. You can't go into a public school with a gun, even if you have a concealed carry permit. You can't go into a public courthouse with a gun, even if you have a concealed carry permit. Unless you're a police officer, you can't do that. In some hospitals, on some wards, even police officers cannot enter certain parts of the hospitals with a gun on them. It's for the public safety. Now, I may disagree with that, or I may agree with it. That's irrelevant. The bottom line is, if you are one of those individuals who simply feel like you, you have to kill yourself or die trying to keep cops coming at, for your guns, and you have to lay down your life to, to prevent them from taking your guns, you're going to die. And who's going to be there to protect your family from a home invader or robber when you are in prison or in the grave? It makes more sense for us as Americans, law-abiding citizens, to stop relying so heavily on a firearm as our only means of, per of personal protection. You could use other things to protect yourself that are just as advantage. You know, if you're able to disarm the guy who's pointing a gun at you, now you have a gun. There's nothing going to stop you from shooting that bad guy and his buddies if you take it from them. Now, I understand that there's a lot of people out there who are physically handicapped and disabled, and they can't physically overpower somebody and take their gun. But the most powerful weapon on the planet is not the handgun, the shotgun, or the rifle. It's the human mind. If you put enough forethought and plan it, 
I can't remember who said it, but he who fails to plant plans to fail. If you never had a firearm, let's pretend you lived in a world where the firearm was never invented. What you going to do if I come to attack you? You're going to find a way to put me down. In self-defense, of course. Now, I'm not professing that you go out there or advocating that you go out there and start killing people who attack you. That's wrong. But there are some deranged lunatics and criminals that are so evil that the only way to stop them from doing you harm or doing your family harm is to put them in the grave. I have a gut feeling if you put your mind to it, you can find an alternate means to protect yourself other than with a firearm. People have been defending themselves for centuries without a gun. You just have to find something, some type of equalizer that you can manipulate well and that you could be effective with. Once you find that, you're okay. Now, I don't want them to take the guns. Please don't start posting comments about Crack Shack wants the government to take their guns. No, I don't want them. I'm totally against this red flag law. But I'm a realist. If they take my guns, I am not going to sit there and engage the cops and fight them out in a shootout because I'm going to lose that battle. They come to take all my guns, whether it's justified or not. I have no choice but to surrender them and fight them in the court system. If I lose my guns, so be it. I lose my guns. At least I'm alive to protect my family. There's a whole bunch of other ways you could you could take a human life in, in self-defense. You can use impact weapons. You can use stabbing weapons, slashing weapons. If You can use a baseball bat. There's all kinds of tools, screwdrivers, hammers. You can carry a, a baseball bat in your, in, your, in, in your trunk of your car, in your house. Uh, chemical warfare you can use. There, you know, if you take a black splat or wasp killer, wasp killer, you could spray that. That'll send the spray 30 feet out. If you blind somebody with it, they can't attack you. If if they inhale the vapors from the spray, they can't breathe. Now they and it's a nerve agent. Now they have a, a nerve agent that's attacking their central nervous system. They have a blinding agent that making them in, unable to see, and they have a choking agent that's keeping them from breathing. Do you really think that bad guy or that home invader is going to continue his hostile? activities with that crap on his face what if you decide to turn that 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 the the wasp killer into a flamethrower with a big lighter you flew he's got a wet face you spray him you spray that 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 flat black flag on him it makes a fireball he's gonna run he's gonna be more concerned about making it to the hospital than he is trying to rob you of in your own home you can keep this black flag right there by the front door and nobody can break in. Keep some all around your house. There's all kinds of things you can do. Every piece of furniture in your room, in your house, can be weaponized. Pick it up, start, pick up the lamp and start swinging it by the extension cord until you knock, knock the crap out of somebody. Granted, I understand these weapons are not ideal against somebody with a firearm. But if you can get within arm's reach... You could grab that firearm and now there's a gun struggle. With one hand you could struggle, with the other hand you can beat. Bottom line is, you are the weapon, not the gun. The gun is just a tool that you use to protect your home. You are the weapon. What you have in here and what you have in here is what makes you the weapon. If you can only defend yourself only with the gun, what are you going to do if your gun malfunctions? You become defenseless just because your gun malfunctions? That's ludicrous. Unfortunately, there's a lot of gun advocates out there who are all pro-gun, and they're the only way they teach others to how to defend themselves is with a handgun. You know what? Not everybody can have a handgun. There are people who made criminal, who, who committed crimes in the past, went to jail, and now are felons and can't own a handgun. Those same people are more than capable of defending their home if somebody breaks into the house. It's not because they're big and strong. Some of them are just small and skinny. And they can whoop your butt and knock you down and, and kill you if necessary if you attack their family. Why? Because they realize, I can't have a handgun or a rifle or a shotgun to protect my family. So I am forced to use an alternate means of self-defense. It is your responsibility to make sure you have an alternate means of self-defense other than a firearm. And again, I don't know how many, I can't say this enough. If the only way you know how to defuse a hostile situation is by shooting somebody, you're a sad person. Because there are a lot of other ways to stop a hostile situation from escalating. You have to be creative.
There are millions of people in the United States that get involved in life-threatening, hostile situations and walk away from it scot-free and they're not in jail, they're not in the hospital, they're not in the morgue, and they didn't have a handgun. If they can do it, you can do it too. Now, again, don't say, don't start posting comments about uh, Crack Shot Chronicle wants the guns to be taken away. No, I don't. I think every law-abiding citizen should have the legal right to bear and keep arms for personal protection. However, we are fighting a battle that we may lose. And you have to realize, should we lose the legal right to keep and bear arms, you have to have a second strategy. Even the military, when they go into battle, they just don't go with one attack pattern and say, this is the attack pattern we're going to use. Oh, it didn't work. What do we do now? We surrender. It's not like that. They'll figure out a different way to, to overcome their problems. One of the movies I like so much, with Arnold, I think it was Arnold Schwarzenegger was in it. Um, no, I'm sorry, not Arnold Schwarzenegger. It was Clint Eastwood. He said, I think it was Heartbreak, Heartbreak Ridge. He said the comment... Adapt, overcome, and improvise. Guess what? If you can't adapt and overcome and improvise, what are you going to do if you go to use your gun and you can't have it because somebody has taken it, like the law enforcement officers the night before, and somebody's attacking you the next day? You're screwed. So buck up, you know. How do they say it? Suck it up, buttercups. I hate that we're losing our guns or that we could lose our guns, but... I personally do not need a firearm to take the life of a human being who's trying to kill me or kill my family. I have other ways to, to dispatch them like a rabbit dog. And if you can't do that yourself, you are, a, you are going to die if somebody attacks you. As hard as this may sound, this is the reality of life. If you like this video, please hit like and subscribe. And also please share with as many people as you like. Please comment. Good or bad, let me know your feedback. Personally, I hope we do not lose our guns. But if it happens, I don't have to have a gun to protect my family. And I hope neither do you. Thank you for watching. Have a good evening.